special guest tonight, uh, Chris Manak, is going to give us some insights into how he became more successful with women in his life and how he teaches it. And uh, I'm quite excited to uh, learn, from, learn from him. And I hope you guys are, uh, are got your pads and pencils ready to take some notes. So, Chris, maybe you can give us a little bit of introduction about, you know, uh, who you are, you know, and uh, what you do and all this sort of thing. Yeah, sure. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Chris. I'm Australian. I'm 43 years of age. I currently live in Thailand, but obviously grew up and spent most of my life in Australia. Um, so in my early 20s, I went through a breakup. Uh, I was 23-ish, I believe. So this is back 2003, something like that. And I just realized that during this breakup, I'd never actually been particularly good socially. Uh, I'd never been particularly good with women. I'd never understood women. I'd never really understood myself around women. I'd never understood why women do the things they do and say the opposite a lot of the times. They used to frustrate the hell out of me, as I'm sure a lot of viewers can relate to. And it was a pretty painful breakup. And I just realized one day, I kind of had a meltdown one day, and I just realized that you just can't live like that. So, I mean, this is what, 2003, so there was not really much to work with. There was, you know, no Facebook, no... A lot of the tools that the guys have now, I just didn't have. So I realized... I'm just going to go out and start talking to people. I'm literally just going to go out wherever I am and start conversations and see what happens. And initially that was in bars. So I would go out every Friday night, every Saturday night. And for several months, I would just stand there because I wasn't really sure what to do. I was on my own and I'd just look for opportunities. Eventually, I started, oh, what are you drinking? Oh, cool, what are you guys out celebrating tonight? And I'd start these little conversations here and there. So I did that for a while before I eventually realized that my hometown of Newcastle was just a little bit too small. I was starting to see the same people all the time. And also back then, the city's very different now, but back then it was very, you settle down, you get married at, 22, 23, you start a family and all that, which is not what I wanted. So I moved to Melbourne. And that's when I started going about things sort of on steroids. I started just approaching a lot through the day, um, going out to bars, meeting up with other guys who were also interested in this. And eventually, after some years of just doing this as a hobby, and getting some success that people noticed, some, some changes internally, externally that people noticed, uh, people started asking me for coaching. And I initially resisted this for quite some time because I thought, this is my hobby. I really love this. The, at the time I was working an office job and I just, this was my sanctuary. This was my time to go out and focus on myself and practice. And I didn't want that being a job, but one day I just needed money. Uh, I, I broke a tooth, frankly, and I just realized I need money. All these people are asking me for coaching. I'm just going to post on a forum and see who wants some help. And I went from there and I coached on weekends for two years. And then after two years, I just realized I don't want to work in an office. I, I love this. I love the results these guys are getting. I'm going to try and do this full time. So that was 2008. And then I proceeded to be a full-time dating coach for men um, for 10 years through till 2018 when I moved to, to Thailand. So in a nutshell, I guess that was my journey. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you think maybe distinguishes you from the other coaches. Is there some element of style or something that you do that you think is a little bit different? Um, I would say maybe two things. One, I just... I did what I teach myself. Um, so this doesn't apply to all dating coaches, obviously, but I know that, that, that the, the idea of being a dating coach is very cool. So a lot of people just jump into it. They've never approached someone in their life. They, they have minimal success with women. They don't understand women whatsoever. And they become a dating coach. And 
kind of just proceed to give the same advice that they read online or hear or all that kind of makes sense. So I guess for me, it was a journey. So when I have a guy who is frozen in a bar, you know, a guy who in the rest of his life, he's, he's confident, you know, maybe he makes a lot of money, has a great job, you know, attractive, successful in every area. So when he's in a bar wondering why he can't go and talk to that girl and he's frozen and, and, and 20 years of, you know, perhaps internal trauma of just take him over. I get that. I understand that because. So I guess that initially, uh, but I think the main thing that kind of made me stand out back in the day was, um, you know, you, you've, you've been around this for a while as well. So back in, back when I started, I, I was just out, hello, how are you? How's your night? This is interesting. Well, I like that tattoo. What it was just very basic sort of information information basic conversations and then when did the game come out 2004 2005 i think 2005 so, yeah. yeah yeah so i'd kind of been doing this myself for a year before that happened and then there was just this mass influx of techniques and different you know speak over the shoulder and and if that works for you fantastic i i i know personally some guys that love that and that works for them but for me i just kind of realized it's just unnecessary I don't want to have to go into a bar and memorize stuff. I don't, I don't want to have to like, for, for me, frankly, I was not really doing this to get girls initially. I was doing this because I realized that I couldn't live how I was living. I couldn't live with zero options and just date whoever happened to fall into my lap. So when that kind of, I think sort of 2005 to maybe 2009, that stuff was very, very rampant, you know, I, you know, I do many interviews, like, tell me a secret, tell me a pickup line, tell me this, tell me that. I was like, well, that's just, it's just it was, I saw a lot of that as unnecessary. So I think um, I, I coached a lot of guys who had read a lot of that stuff, who had done a lot of that stuff. And then they came to me and I noticed those guys had a ton of approach anxiety because they were trying to do it perfectly. So I have to approach her like this and I have to pause and I have to say this and then I have to convey this. Then I have to tell a story and it's just they would freeze because they would you could see like the the, the script running in their head. And I would just sort of say to them, just fucking stop, just pause. Look at who is she? Just look at her. What is she wearing? What is she doing? Who is she with? Just read her for a second. Is there anything that you can comment on? Which is a big one, you know. Most girls have something that you can comment on, something that you can ask, something that you can naturally ask. Or if this girl just absolutely takes your breath away, go with that. Just go with that. Use that to start a conversation. Because I think girls are very good at reading men, full stop. They're just very, very, I, I really do believe that women can read men on a very deep subconscious level, almost instantly. So... I kind of realized like if that's going on under the underneath under the hood it doesn't really matter what's going on 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 the surface level you you can if if you're you know if you're a bit of a dork and you haven't looked after yourself or whatever you can have the best game the best script the best opener that girl's still going to see you for who you are whereas if you kind of work on yourself develop yourself and this you know you you get that by doing that you know I've approached literally tens of thousands of women in my time I didn't just and most of them were terrible. But over time from doing that, I, I, I developed that confidence in not really caring. So when I was approaching, I was like, I hope this goes well. This girl's beautiful. She looks interesting. I hope this goes well. But if it doesn't, it's going to be a mild sting to my ego for a few seconds. And then I'm just going to get on with my night. Whereas I found a lot of other guys would come back like, okay, I did something wrong there. I said something wrong. I didn't do it right. And I was like, or oh, you're just not compatible. Like, you're just not compatible. You, you can go and talk to a bunch of dudes as well. Like, go to a bar, talk to 10 guys. How many are you going to get along with? Three, two? Like, it's 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 the same thing. So I think that kind of distinguish, distinguished me back in the day. Just this, just this natural approach of let's just do it a lot you'll improve in the process. And then it sucks. This is another thing that really distinguished me as well. I would always say to guys, 
this sucks. This sucks. This is no more enjoyable than going to the gym or working on a business or doing anything that you want the end result from. What do you want? Confidence. You want more sexual partners. You want a wife. What do you want? That takes work. Not for all guys. Some guys just naturally have it. It's fantastic. I never had it. Most guys don't naturally have it. So that was a big relief for a lot of my, a lot of my clients that I could just say to them, this sucks. We're going to go out for four hours tonight and you might enjoy half an hour of that. And that's okay because you want that end result. You need to focus on the small wins that you're going to have throughout the night. You know, if you've never approached anyone before and you're 28 years of age and you're in a bar and you and start a conversation with a beautiful girl and if that's a win that's a huge win you need to focus on that who cares if it weren't for one minute you know so i think that was a big thing for me so i've kind of walked my talk i've done what these guys are trying to learn to just we can just be you but you are malleable we can improve you and you're going to improve from this journey and three you don't have to be the life of the party you don't have to be confident you don't have to be cocky you don't have to be any of that shit. you can just allow yourself to not enjoy this and you're going to get way better results. Yeah. Um, was there a, um, a big learning curve between, I mean, it sounds like you went out to the bars and uh, started uh, just sort of saying almost anything. And then, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe it was the 2005 when the, the community seemed to explode all over the place was was at that mm. point where you picked up a lot of, uh, I guess, differentiating techniques, or was it uh, just things that you started to learn on your own that uh, that made a difference from from just sort of the very sounded like very innocuous, casual conversations you were starting up, you know, uh, and and you know, from going from that to actually having success with the women, and, yeah, and moving it into a little more well, intimate direction. I, I, you know? Yeah, when a lot of that came out, of course, I, I, I tried it, of course, I was still, I'd only been doing it for a couple of years myself. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll try any, I'll try anything. I remember going to bars with things written on my hand, you know, casually taking a peek. Oh, I'm going to say that now. I'm going to ask that now. Um, so I, I was just a big advocate for guys like, do what works, like, not do what works, do what allows you to do it. If, if scripted openers gets you out of the house and doing this, do that. If you can hold a conversation only by having a few stories me mem memorized, do that. Because the thing is like, that's what most matters, just doing it. So, and so even now, like 50, it's kind of 50, 50, 50% 50 of the guys that come to me will be like, I don't want to do weird shit. I don't want, I just want to be better at this. And then the other 50% will be like, I'm an engineer or I'm a doctor. It's usually guys in these kind of trades. I need step by step. I need to know how to ask for a number. I need to, you know, and then I can give them small sort of little things that can help, you know, just adding like, you know, I've got to get back to my friends when you go for a phone number or just giving a reason for getting the phone number. A lot of guys will just have a conversation then randomly ask for a social media or, or a phone number. Mm -hmm. I've found it's even if you're cool, I'd like to stay in touch with you. If you just give a look, because if you're just having a convo with a girl and then you go for a phone number or, or Instagram or whatever, for one, she's going to be a bit like, where the fuck did that come from? And two, it's why? Like why so and that's another thing through the day as well like i see a lot of guys trying to carry the same approach to meeting women from night into day so they'll jump in front of a girl and just start telling a story and you see these, these women just like what the fuck is happening like so if you stop a girl on the street or in a supermarket or a cafe or something the first thing she's thinking is who is this guy is this guy a threat what does he want so if you can address, all, you don't need to do that at night. You can literally just walk up to a group of girls. Hey guys, what's going on? Oh, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. What did you get her? Or whatever the hell. You can just have that combo because it's it's expected to approach in bars at night. It's kind of, they, they know what's going on. Through the day, you can't do that. So, you know, if guys want that kind of more structured approach, then I can give that to them. But if they want to just, I just want to go and start some combos 
and see who I who see who I get along with and who gets along with me. So I'm definitely not against more techniques technique based things. I just think the ideal to get to is it, it kind of becoming you. And that's one thing that I say to guys now, like if you're new, you need to treat this like the gym. You need to go out consistently and practice this so that it can become you. And then you get to a point where you don't even really have to go out to consciously approach anymore. You can just like, oh, there's someone who looks interesting sitting on a beach reading a book. And you can you can just kind of incorporate. You didn't go out for that. Maybe you were out for a run, but so you can do it. But when you're new, I find that that's what keeps a lot of guys stuck in that beginner, in that beginner phase. They're just like, I just want to do this naturally as it goes about my, you know, as I go about my life. And I was like, you don't have that option because as confident as you feel now, and as much as you've as you've read up on this, when a girl that you're very attracted to walks past you. You're, you're, you know, you know how that feels. You, you, you have that immediate, like, what the fuck am I going to say? You, 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 you go straight into panic mode. And by the time you compose yourself and think of something to say, she's gone. So I say to guys like six months, you need to commit six months to going out to just practicing this, be prepared to fail 80% of the time, like six months. Well, what do we live to 80, eight, 90? put aside six to 12 months to get good at this. And then you kind of got that sorted, you know? So I can't remember the original question, but I hope I answered it. <laughs> well, where I wanted to go from where we are is, um, uh, is tell me about your, I guess the path from, from that to be more intimate with women to, uh, you know, from sort of the sort of generic, conversation the general conversation which is you know uh oh that's a you know a general compliment or a, hi how are you or whatever that to you know moving that along into a more uh, personal interaction how how it interaction sort of happened how it happened like with you like what, what you know maybe your process and then how you guide your students through it yeah so into a more personal conversation at some point you have to turn the conversation from things into her so yeah if you go up and you're chatting with a girl in a bar and you're talking about the bar and you're talking about why you're out your friend her friends just whatever going on at some point you need to you need to f ask her something about her you, you need to it needs to move more into a um it's a big thing i find guys really struggle with questions. They just don't want to ask questions. Like if I meet someone new in my head, the way I see it is this is a 25, 30, 35 year old book in front of me. There's an endless amount of things that I can ask. And I think you want to get to a point where you have no issues with asking. My ex-girlfriend my ex -girlfriend actually said that to me. She was like, when I first met her, I was just like, question, 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 because I was kind of captivated by her. I, I wanted to know. And I have no issue with that because I think if you've got kind of a solidity behind you, they're okay with that. I think it's when you've kind of got an emptiness within you and you're trying to ask questions to fill space, to, to, to just like, I've got to keep this conversation going. How old are you? Where do you live? Do you have cats? You know, you, that's when it comes across as different. When it comes across as like, I'm interested in you. I, I'm trying to figure you out. Where did you grow up? Because every every answer that I get is a piece of the puzzle that I can put in there. So I would say to move it to a more sort of intimate, personal conversation, questions, get to know her. You know, are there, is there anything about her immediately that jumps up at you? I mean, I love tattoos, so I'm always going to ask about tattoos. Um, anything. If I see a girl in Converse, I only wear Converse, you know, that, that's I'm I'm curious about that and and you're gonna have your each guy's gonna have their own thing that they're interested in, so like I personally I'm not that interested in travel even though I live in a different country, like, but I understand that a lot of people are, so you know if a girl's gone to Barbados or she's, you know she's gone to Italy or wherever a lot of guys are gonna be interested in that and that's gonna be an important puzzle so with the these answers that you're getting back. Don't just get the answer and then move on to the next question. 
each answer that you get, what does that say about the person? What does that say about the girl? If she's a hairdresser, in your mind, what does that say about her? You know, and, and you're going to start putting this puzzle of who this person, it's actually quite fun, you know, coming from someone who's not particularly extroverted and whatever, that can be quite fun because you start putting all these pieces together. Oh, that tattoo means that you grew up here. You know, you, these are your friends, you know, you start getting an idea of who this girl is and, and then it just naturally kind of escalates. And, you know, a good way is to tell if a girl's interested in you is if, is it reciprocated? Is she asking you things as well? Or are you just bombarding her with questions? Is she ain't asking you anything? Is she being polite? So, um, yeah, and then to move things to sort of more intimate, I would say the biggest thing would be just patience. Patience. I, 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 women develop interest in men at a much slower rate than we do them. So if a girl is really beautiful and she's friendly and she has a calm energy about her, we're going to fall pretty hard pretty fast. Girls aren't like that. So, is this a, you know, when I was learning myself, I would see guys out obsessed with one night stands, obsessed with taking a girl home that night. And it's like the same four hours that you've spent working on that one girl who's probably going to get in a taxi and go home with her friends because you didn't ask the right questions. I've got five phone numbers because I just had 10 minute interactions with people like, you're really cool. I got to get back to my friends. Like I should grab your number or whatever. And then of course, of those five, two are going to flake the next day. You're going to wake up and like, fuck this guy. That's going to happen. But then you got three phone numbers, one of which you'll end up on a date with. And then you just continue that and then go on a first date and okay, how do I escalate this date? Don't just again, th these things. If, if, if you just have patience on this journey, I know this is not very good advice for guys who just want that sort of technical stuff, but if you trust the process and you keep at it, I couldn't tell you how many times I, I quit this. You know, I'd go out, I'd have my ass handed to me. I'd be rejected all night and just depressed and just like, what am I fucking doing this for? Ugh. And then the very next week is like, all right, what are my options? Stay at home or just try to get better at this still? Fuck it, I'm gonna go out and try again. That's when things would ramp up. When, when I would quit, I've had enough, ugh. And then, so just don't quit, trust the process, keep going, have patience. Be curious about the people that you're meeting. And, it, and it's going to unfold. Yeah, sure, there are a bunch of technicals, you know, touch and, and all that sort of stuff, all that sort of stuff. Um, but I think most guys are so focused on those technicalities that it's preventing them from doing the things to even get to that point. You know, it's like if you're so obsessed with approaching correctly and saying the right thing, it's going to prevent you from even approaching. If you're so focused on... How do I escalate this date to get her home? It's going to take you out of the moment. You're going to be looking for things that maybe aren't even there. You're going to be creating a story in your head that's probably not even happening. Whereas if you just, like, if I remember going on dates and just like, I would take my laptop. I'd go 10 minutes early, I'd take my laptop, I'd order myself a beer, and I'd just be working away. The girl would turn up, hi, oh, hey, do you want a drink? One minute, I'll finish this. But like, I'm, just, I'm, I'm there because I want to be there. I'm there because, like, it's not a strategic, okay, and then I'm going to touch her and I'm going to tell this story. Sure, I generally have an outline of a date, but it was more, I'm inviting you into my world. And that's a big thing with questions as well. Guys don't want to ask questions because they're like, no, no, you should be interviewed. It should, you know, when people say like, sounds like an interview. It is. It's an interview for a spot in your life. Like, why wouldn't you want to get to know someone, you know? If I'm going to go out on a Thursday, I like being at home. I'm never happier than when I'm at home. If I'm going to put on my shit and have a share and go meet someone for a drink, I want to know who they are in advance. So I'm going to ask a lot of questions. So don't be afraid of asking questions. Don't. And then again, use what's coming back. Listen, read between the lines, like make assumptions about what she's saying and then use what she's saying to continue on with the conversation. A lot of guys skim over, like I said. What do you do? I'm a hairdresser. Oh, cool. Where did you grow up? Oh, you grew up in Melbourne? Oh, cool. Do you have brothers? Do you have sisters? Yeah. And it's like, you've not used any of that. That girl just gave you three topics that you could expand on, and you've not used any of that, you know? So, yeah. You know, you remind me of, uh, I think, before the community really became 
uh, as prevalent as it was. I remember when I was much younger, I would get a, a girl back to my apartment. Uh, a lot of times I just had, had invited her over and she just came over. It was, there was nothing uh, really kind of intimately set up in advance. It was just sort of more, uh, you know, we had a good conversation. I said, you know, why don't you come over? And she came over. And uh, I think there used to be a movie called The Tao of Steve. And, and one of the um, methods in there that they talk about is sort of they have to wait sort of like 15 minutes longer than than uh, than her or something like that. Or, or there's, this, there's this little time gap between when you're ready and when she's ready. And if you just sort of wait a little bit longer, she falls into that ready position. And I remember a lot of the times that something actually happened with the women, it was only simply because I let certain time pass by. And it's as if they were waiting yeah. for something too. And it just happened because the time passed. Uh, you know, it's an in interesting, yeah. uh, the, I guess, the, the yeah. techniques, of, I mean, techniques of the natural, I guess you would call them something like that, you know. Uh, how many times I'd be walking home from a date and a girl would say, just so you know, I'm not going to have sex with you. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm going to drink some wine on my balcony. That's why I asked you over. And within 10 minutes of being home, they're the one making the move. So it's like, I think especially attractive girls, they're so used, I mean, everyone knows this, they're so used to being hit on and guys escalating and pursuing that if they can meet someone who can just chill out, it was like, if this happens, great. If not, I, whatever. And of course you, you do a little bit. If, if a girl's at your house and you're attracted to her, like, of course you want something to happen, but you've got to try and balance that with the like, I'm, if this doesn't work, I can just meet someone else. If nothing happens here, what, I can just go ahead and meet someone else. I can keep, I'll learn some things tonight. So yeah, I, I understand it. It is that, that balance of like, oh my God, she's so hot. I, I, I want something to happen here. But if you can just kind of balance that with, you know, and again, th these are these are things that I learned just from trial and error. You know, you mentioned natural stuff before. And it's like the only reason I came to realize these is because I would take a girl home and pursue things and do all the things and like nothing had ever happened. And then, I don't know, maybe I'd go home a bit bummed out one night or a girl would come over when I was a bit sick or I just like, I just, I just want to chill. Hey, I'm not. And then something happened. I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Or, you know, you'd go home and I don't have condoms. Okay, let's let's just chill. And then they're escalating things. So it's like you you learn all these things from having the opposite happen a million times, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell me a little bit more about uh, how you teach your, your students. Uh, you know, you probably get the variety of uh, ones with different challenges, some that are uh, maybe they're, they come on too strong and others that are too shy. And then there's others that, you know, maybe they have uh, things that, 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 you know, are in their way, like maybe they're too short or they're, they feel they're ugly or whatever it is that, that uh, they feel are, are problems. How do you sort of deal with these different uh, challenges and, and, you know, yeah, maybe give, it's, it's funny that, that everyone, everyone's so different, but I find men, more and more have the same issues. So it's funny, I'll, I'll jump on a consultation with a lot of guys and they'll be like, man, just, I don't know if you're gonna be able to figure this out, but I've been dealing, I've been dealing with this and this because of this. And it's like, yeah, you're like my last 20 consultations. Like you're not, your issues aren't that unique. We've all kind of been on the same kind of journey. We've we're all had to deal with different sort of things. So I think it can be very relieving for guys to realize like, oh, your guy last week had this as well? Like, oh, you had this as well? So it can be very relieving because, you know, as we know, men don't tend to talk about this stuff a, a whole deal. And I have a lot of con uh, consultations with guys where they say that, where they're just like, I'm just, God, this is nice to talk about. My friends just give me shit. The advice that I get from other women seems to have the opposite effect. My parents can't really help different generations. So it's just nice to talk to someone about this. So I, I, that makes me feel really good. I, I, I really enjoy that when they can just dump on me. This has happened and this has happened. And then she left and I just, I can't figure out why and I can't move on. And it's been five years since I've dated and I don't know how to use apps. And like, I've never approached anyone and I feel very alone. And it's like, yeah, this happens to guys every day. <laughs> like every single day that happens to, to someone else, you know? So I think it's just understanding 
So the issue is the same, but the person's different. So if I can understand the person a bit, then I can I can sort of work on a different approach to them. I mean, ultimately, a lot of my advice is like you, this is going to suck, but you're going to have to go out and do this, which a lot of people don't want to hear. They, of course, want like, I've got this issue. What's the what's the thing? How do I just get the next girl? I was like, well, if you just get the next girl, the same thing's going to happen. If you haven't learned anything, I'll say this regularly to guys. You know, if I meet a 24 year old guy and all my friends are starting to get married, they've all got girlfriends, they're not going out anymore, I'm feeling left behind, I don't understand women or dating. And how do I just get a girlfriend? I'll say to him, like, getting a girlfriend right now would be the worst thing for you because you haven't learned anything. That's going to go horribly for yourself or the world in weird dating situation getting a girlfriend right now is going to end horribly for you so be thankful that you don't you know so yeah there are any uh did i answer that well i guess what i what i wanted to ask you is more uh, are there any kind of individually tailored special advice for different specific problems like a, in a guy who's shy you might tell him something different than a guy who's uh who feels he's short you know or or uh yeah, even, of course. you know you know is there any sort of specific um advice that you you pass along that's that's a little yeah, bit sure. uh, well, I mean, thing in the individual you know yeah sure well I, I guess i'll just use those two as an example shy um and i've i've been guilty of this we tend to identify as what we've labeled ourselves. So if you've been shy, you'll kind of on some level use as, that as an excuse to not do, it's like saying, I'm thin, I'll never have muscles. And it's like, yeah, you are thin, you're rail thin, but you can go to the gym and fix that. So like, it, it, I'll just sort of say like, yes, you're shy, I was shy. The best women, the best guys with women that I know are shy. They're, they're to some degree introverts because if I, I tend to think that like if you're if you're OK at something, you tend to stay OK at it. You know, the, the guy who's naturally OK with women, he'll just naturally always be OK with women. Which is fine. That, that's the case for most guys and they get married and have kids and cool. But. If you're shit at something, i.e. in this case, you're shy, you're not very good social, you don't, you're not very good at going to speak, you're not very good at holding conversations, you're not very good at escalating conversations, asking for phone numbers. You have to learn that. So because you're shit, you have two choices, stay shit or get good. And the thing is, you're going to surpass the guys who are okay. Like the guys that are okay, there's, there's no reason to improve. But if you're really shit, so you're like, so see this shyness almost as a blessing as in, in disguise, because it gives you a huge opportunity to become really good at not being shy. You know, again, I grew up very shy. I'm still quite introverted, but I can turn it on pretty easily. <laughs> you know, I can go out, I can go to house parties, I can, I can deal. It's still not really in my nature, but I can turn that shit on like a light switch just because I, I learned to have to, you know, and I have people say all, all the time, like, how do you network the way, when I worked in an office, I used to have this, like how, I got headhunted a lot when I worked in an office because I'd been out approaching a ton of women and people would often ask me like, how did you get that job? You're not qualified for that job. How did you make that contact? And it's like, because at the Christmas party, when you guys were standing in the corner, I was off talking to the various teams and the various other companies. And, that, and that's, like, I got that from going to speak to thousands of people that I, I don't know. Um, in short, a lot of people are going to say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It does. It just does. Most women want tall guys. They do. So it's the first thing I say to them. Like, you need, same as bald. Women want men with hair. They just, for the, for the most part, do. But not all of them. <laughs> it's not all of them, you know? So... You need to just maximize what you can. So if you're short, you should be in the gym four or five days a week. You should have a chiseled body. You, you need to maximize everything that you can do because shortness ain't, you know, if you're overweight, sure, that's something you can fix. If you're like, 
if you're if you're bold or short or or, or something that it just is. Yeah, you should, I guess bold you could take finasteride or so sort of work on on that, but I won't even get into that. But you have to maximize what is in your capability. So if you're a short guy, one of the best guys that I ever met was five six, I think. Guy that I used to know in Melbourne, five five, five six. But the energy that this guy, I used to go out with this guy all the time and I would just watch him work a room. The energy that he would just carry to me. He used to date people much taller than him, much more attractive than him too, to be frank. But the energy that he would carry into a bar. And I, I know that he would have his own concerns about being short. He knows most women want a taller man, a taller man. They, they do. So say you need to accept certain things you, you just do. It's, you know, we tend to date within our race. Women want a taller guy. Women like a man who's financially secure. There's, you need to accept reality and improve what you can. So if you're shy, you can fix that. If you're short, you can't, but you can also in some way fix that, you know. What about relationships? Uh, are you, um, do you, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's certain I guess there's certain steps with a woman, you know, there's the beginning where you meet them, you, you, I guess, uh, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about, uh, you know, if there are any spe special things that you tell guys to say or to do, or to, or is it just all sort of learn off, off uh, you know, off uh, being natural in, in field, or, or is there certain things that you coach them to, to uh, give them kind of training wheels to, uh, to get started? If they're looking for a relationship, well, we're gonna we'll get we'll move over to relationships after. Let's start off with just the um, uh, the um, you know the meeting of women. Like what you know, uh, as you've sort of uh, developed your skills over the years, you know what what has improved in terms of what you say. What have you modified? What have you smoothed out? What 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 has uh, uh, have you done that's improved your results with with uh, your initial reactions, inter initial interactions with women. Okay, sure. Um, not many people are going to like this advice, but you have to reach a point where it doesn't affect you as much. So I remember once I met a guy who told me that he went to a bar, tried an approach, got rejected, and then didn't go out for another six months. So I think the biggest thing that is going to smooth over your interactions is reaching a point where it, you're not too phased if they work out or they don't. And, and I know that's like completely impractical advice, but if you're out knowing that something is going to impact you massively and it's going to fuck up your day, week, possibly even year, nothing that you do is going to work. You know, this is why some people have the ability to just, hey, what's up? How are you? How's your night going? Like that's what because there's no sense of like needing anything from that. And and again, girls are especially good at detecting that. What does this person want from me? So if she can read in you that you're not it's the same thing with a relationship. This guy desperately wants to be in a relationship with me, versus like he would like to be in a relationship with me, but if he's not, his life is not gonna stop. So I would say that that is a big one. Um, How about what things that what you actually say? Things that you actually say that maybe you've you've adjusted, you know, over the years. That I've oh god, my my first approaches were horrible. I used to walk around supermarkets asking what fucking aisle the gravy was in because I didn't know any better. I was just whatever I can think of, I'm gonna use. So now I typically say to guys like, for me personally, the first thing you want to do is look at the girl. Is there anything about the girl that you can comment on? Is there anything about the situation that you can comment on? I'm, I'm a big fan of direct approaching if that's what you feel in your core, but I feel that it's massively overused. You know, you'll, I, I used to see a lot, many situations where a girl would just have so many interesting things about her and a guy would go over and like, hey, I just wanted to come and tell you you're really beautiful. And it's like, Firstly, you said that so generically that she knows that you're out saying that to 100 people. 
And secondly, there are so many interesting things about this. So like, excuse me, sorry, I, I just, I couldn't help but to notice this, or I couldn't help to ask, or I, I'm, I just, it's another thing as well, like this whole, like, don't apologize, don't say, so, like, fuck that. I start all my approaches with excuse me. Anytime I'll excuse me, and then I'll just pause. I'll give them a second to just recognize, just notice that, yes, I have your attention. Um, yeah, so just look at the girl. Is there anything that you can say? Is there anything about the situation that you can comment on? Because I think this is how an ideal relationship ad develops for girls. You know, she wants to feel that it just happened. We met randomly in a supermarket over fruit. And then we went on a date and we had a good time and it escalated from, from there. I think that's, you know, I think that's kind of the ideal. So I would say, look at the girl, look at the situation. Is there anything you can comment on? Again, if a girl walks past you and your mind is blown, absolutely go direct, straight to the fucking point. This is why I'm here. Again, just do it in a way that, just touch on it and move on. Don't keep banging on about how beautiful she is. She knows, she's heard it from a million guys. But again, what you're doing in this case is the first thing that a girl thinks when you're approaching her is what does he want? So if you can clarify that right away, excuse me, sorry to stop you. I just, you're really beautiful. I know this is random or whatever. You're gonna do it in your own way. Don't script anything as well. Go in and let yourself be clumsy. I know a lot of guys hate this advice because it's not, you know, ABC. Allow yourself to be clumsy. Allow yourself to fumble over words. Firstly, it's going to make your approach so much better. It's going to make it more authentic. And a girl wants to feel, I believe, a girl wants to feel help but to approach her. You had to overcome your, your fear. She had such an impact on you that you had to do something about it. And a guy that just goes in with a very generic, bland sounding opener, it it's not very enthralling, you know? So uh, it's like red light girls, orange light girls, green light girls. Red light girls, you just know. You go in, you know. Their body language is off, they're turning away, they're giving you short answers, they're looking at their phone, they're not interested. Don't try and turn that girl. Don't try and flip that girl. Because even if you do get a number out of her, she ain't gonna text you back. So mm -hmm. this is a big thing that I notice with guys who are like, I'm getting a lot of flakes. And it's like, yeah, because you're not reading the interaction properly. So then you've got your green light girls. They just light up like a Christmas tree. You know, everyone's had this where you just approach a girl and she's just, she blushes and she can't believe this is happening. You'll hear things like, I wish more guys did this, that sort of thing. Green light girls, fantastic. You don't need any help. You know what to do. Chat for a little while, grab a phone number, go on an instant date, get her social media, whatever it is. Then you've got your orange light girls, which is going to be most girls. You're not too sure. She's friendly, but is she interested? She's replying, but is she asking you anything? So it's kind of like those orange light girls are the ones that you need to. That's where the, that's where the most growth is going to happen. You approach a girl and she's a red light. You, cool. You're going to have a bit of a ding to your ego. You're going to have to re-motivate yourself to try again. Green light girls, you know what to do. Those orange light girls, that's where all the that's where all the, the, the learning takes place. That's where you're gonna learn to read people. That's where you're gonna learn to look at feet, shoulders, hands, eyes, get a bit of a feel for her vibe. Like, yeah, sure, she's facing me and she's smiling, but something's off here. So as you kind of do this progressively, and you just this is this is probably my favorite thing that I've learned from all of this, just the ability to read people much better, you know, to, to look at a situation and uh, she's way more into him than he's into her, or just watch people on the street, read people. And that's why I did so well at those like networking events and stuff. I could tell who was open, you know, if I'm in a bar, I can see the girls who are talking to each other, but occasionally will like, glance around the room and then go back to each other. It's like, you learn to read social situations so much better from just doing this, uh, a lot because you start to notice patterns, you know, the same things happen. So when this starts getting boring, that's when you need to keep going because that's when you're starting to notice patterns. It's like, okay, this always happens. Okay, that's good. That's good. You're noticing patterns, you know, so yeah. Well, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about relationships. Uh, I guess uh, it's going to take a few 
<laughs> well, um, you know, maybe you can take it from, uh, you know, from actually meeting the girl to continuing to see her. You know, uh, what, what if anything you do that uh, you think makes something continue, or is it just, is it just the specific chemistry with that particular girl, or is there something that you can do to, to uh, improve that, uh, that, that relationship? Um, well, the first thing I would say is if you are after a relationship and you don't have any or much experience with women, I would not go for a relationship just yet. Again, I would put in those six to 12 months of going out. If you meet an amazing person in month two, then yeah, sure, consider. Okay, I just started learning this. Who? Well, I, I used to say that that's the advanced problem. I used to tell clients all the time, beginner's problem, you just can't approach. You don't know how to start conversations. Intermediate problem is I'm getting all these numbers and having all these combos, but I'm getting flakes. I'm getting first dates, but not second. I'm in this weird, it's working, but it's not. The advanced problem is I just got good at this and then I met this girl. What do I do? So, I, and I used to have a lot of clients deal with that. They'd put in a few months and they're like, fuck, I get it. I'm starting to understand. I'm over my ex. I understand why that's happening. I noticed that little shoulder turn. This girl's awesome what the fuck do i do now i used to have to sit down and have that combo regularly with clients so but if you're not there i would say that initially don't because i think if you don't understand like female nature to some degree to some degree we're never going to understand fully the same way they'll never understand us but if you don't understand essentials um push pull again this little girls like to feel a little in control in relationships. I think there there is that part of girls who are just, they don't want to get hurt. So they feel if they have a little bit more control, I'm not going to get hurt. You know, it's just, if you're, un, you need to understand these fundamentals, otherwise you're just going to get destroyed, I think. And then, you know, it's, divorce sounds messy. I've never had it, but it sounds, sounds messy. You know, being married for 20 years and having someone have an affair and it sounds horrible, but I've had many of those consultations. And when the client tells me the story, it's like, I don't even, you don't even need to finish this story. I know how this story ends. Because everything you've told me leading up, I, you missed that, you missed that, you missed that, you forced her into the relationship, you missed that, you missed those like, the messaging change, the timing of the messaging change, you missed all that. And the reason you missed all that is because you got into a relationship at 22 and you got married at 24 and now you're 42 wondering what the fuck happened. So my heart absolutely goes out to those guys. But again, th this is a common thing with guys in their kind of mid twenties when a lot of their friends are starting to, to settle down, get in relationships, they feel left behind or, you know, even early thirties, fuck, I've, I've worked, I've got my career, I've bought a house, I've got my car, everything sorted. I want a girl now. And it's like, it's not hard. It's not hard to get a girlfriend. You can get a girlfriend. You know, you meet enough. One's going to like you. Great. But firstly, was that the best girl for you? If you've only met one, was she the best for you? Or, you know, and secondly, I, I just think there's, it's crucial to put in time to go out, to meet girls, to sleep with girls, to understand girls, to understand yourself. You know, why do I react when this happens? When girls do this, why do I fly off the handle? Like, you don't want to be in a, well, you're going to learn that in a relationship anyway. That's still going to come up because a relationship is going to trigger things that like being single and meeting a bunch of girls just won't. You know, in my last relationship, I learned more about myself than I probably did in 10, what is it, 15, 18 years of game. So that's still going to be triggered. But yeah, again, most of the time, relationships going wrong from what I've seen. And it's, it's, and I don't say this from a, a judging standpoint that, you know, I know better or anything. It's the signs for me are so obvious along the way that you let slip that it was inevitable that that, that, that would happen. So I'd say like, put in time, go learn about yourself, women, dating, get on Tinder, go out, learn to approach, learn to fucking approach. Guys are so, I'm not against apps, even though I'm not, I've probably spent an hour on dating apps in my fucking life. But like, you are gonna learn so much more from going to a bar and 
intending to speak with 10 women in that night. You're going to learn more in that, in that about yourself more than anything and about women and the world. Like bars are little microcosms of the world, I think. It's more prominent there. It's more obvious there. But I can see it here as well. Like, so yeah, I, I, would, I would say put in time. Just, just put in time. Um, the second thing uh, I mentioned before, I'm not sure if I mentioned this when we got cut off or not, but um, yeah, again, women develop feelings much slower than men. <laughs> so have some patience, date around, see a couple of girls. Uh, this is my advice to girls as well, was see a few people. And then when things escalate, then close those doors, you know? Um, it does trouble me when I meet guys who are just, you know, maybe they'll be late twenties or whatever. I don't want to do this dating thing. I don't want to meet a lot of girls. I'm not a multiple, I'm not a player. I don't want to be a player. I just want a girl. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I understand that. That's a lot of us. I understand that. But if you like, it's the same thing, whether you want to be a player or you want a fucking wife, you need to take initially the same journey, in my opinion, open to be wrong but i believe the best result is going to happen for you is if you take the same result and i saw this so many times where a guy had come to me like i want to be a fucking rock i used to call it rock star syndrome where a guy was like i want to be a rock star. i want to be a player i want all these girls and i was like this dude is going to fall in love with the first girl he meets and it would happen very often and then the reverse of that would happen very often as well guys would um you know, I just, I mean, I need that girl. I just, I just want someone to share my life with. And then one month into learning this, they're like, yeah, I think I might pause on that for a bit. This is kind of fun. I, I kind of, I kind of like this. I've never really understood any of this, but this is kind of fun. And a lot of that came from me saying to them, this is not fun. This journey's not fun. It's shit. It sucks. There are going to be things revealed to you that you were hoping you could live your life without ever noticing. I couldn't tell you how many clients had meltdowns in bars, full blown panic meltdowns. They didn't want that. They just wanted to meet a girl, but suddenly something comes up and it's like, you are so lucky that this happened now rather than in eight years time when you're in a relationship, you know? So, yeah. I think we're, you know, getting a good insight into how you think about all this. Uh, maybe now you can tell uh, uh, the viewers a little bit about, you know, what you offer uh, in terms of coaching or, or other training or whatever, and then uh, let's uh, let's uh, wrap it up after that. Yeah, sure. Um, I offer primarily just consultations now, just 90-minute consultations where we jump on, have conversations like this where I just dig around in your brain. Um, like I mentioned before, don't feel alone in your problem because I assure you there are so many men going through the same thing as you do. And it just gives you an outlet to talk to someone who's been there and has overcome it. For the most part, I'm not flawless. I'm a fucking maniac. But what you want to know, I've probably done. And I've probably taught thousands of men to do the same. Whether that's like, I've just had my heart ripped out and I don't know what the fuck to do now. Or... I just don't know how to start conversation. This is a big, you know, for 90% of guys, dating apps don't work. You know, they just, they just, they just don't. Go and ask any guy, like most, or if I'll meet someone and I'll settle for that person. This, this does happen a lot, you know. I can't really meet people. She's kind of cute. She's a bit, I'll see where this goes. And, I, and I, I know that because I have those conversations. You know, I've been dating this girl for four years. I was never super into her. And now we're looking at getting engaged and I don't know what to do. I have those conversations with the guys. Um, so dude, there's, there's nothing better than getting decent at this and then meeting someone who blows you away. If you've never met someone, you know, if, if your skills with women are very limited and you meet someone, that, um, that feels good. That feels good. But if you've met Thousands, no, not necessarily thousands, a lot of people. If you've met a lot of women, you've had a lot of experience in dating, you've, had, you've done the whole like casual sex, sleep around. If you've done all that and experienced a lot in, in this, 
and then you meet someone who blows you away, dude, that's, that's a fucking, that's exhilarating, you know? And I don't think many guys will experience that because they won't, they won't go through what you have to go through. So in short, I focus primarily on, uh, on my consultations um, and then getting the guys to just go out and, and start implementing what I believe is the best advice for them. So, yeah. Well, look, uh, Chris, I really want to thank you for taking the time with me this evening. Uh, I think uh, you've given, you've given, I'm sure you've given, you know, I'm sure a lot of the guys are going to get a lot of good uh, ideas out of what you've had to say. And, uh, uh, you know, I guess the only other thing is you, you want to mention, I guess, where someone could reach you for, uh, for further uh, exploration of what they could do with you. Uh, sure. My website is Manic Workshops, M-A-N-I-C workshops.com. Um, Chris Manic on Instagram, um, Chris Manic on YouTube. Um, not particularly active on either of those, but I, I do intend to um, to do more with those this year. So we'll we'll see what I have on offer in the in the coming year or so. Very good. Well, I'm going to end it right here. I appreciate your time again, and uh, I was really really appreciate you uh, helping me and 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 all the guys here who are going to learn from from this this evening thanks a lot my pleasure man and i will say like you're you're an og you you were one of the <laughs> few people around when i started dude i knew about you back in 2003 2004 where there was nothing there was nothing i like remember those days community so i knew about you back then so when you reached out to me i was like oh shit yeah because I, I don't do these i don't like talking about this stuff for the most part like interviews and that sort of stuff i say no to the media all the time um, but I saw your name. I was like, I've got to do this one. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I really, really do. All right. Thanks a lot and have a great evening. Thanks, mate. Bye.